math, everyone, we're back, and now we're going to graph log base two of negative x. Take note that the negative now, it's inside your grouping symbols, inside your argument. So when the negative symbol is inside your grouping symbols, that's gonna reflect your graph over the y-axis because any positive x values will now graph as negative x values, and any negatives will go to positives, and that moves you left, right, or really it reflects you over the y-axis. So we will say here the graph from example three has been reflected across the y-axis. Oops, forgot how to spell across or I'm blanking on if it's one C or two C's right now. I think that's it, Reflect, reflected across the y-axis. All right, so I want us to think about what that would look like. Right? Imagine this graph from example three. If I took a mirror and I flipped it over here, right? How does that reflect over the y-axis? You can see my finger kind of sketching it out here. So let's see if we can get that to work, all right? Okay, so with that, I'm gonna label and scale my axes. And let's go ahead and do like we always do. Let's get our domain. Now this time my argument is negative x. I want negative x to be greater than zero. And when I solve for this, I would need to divide by negative one. And I hope your spidey senses are going off, right? I'm dividing by a negative number, so that will change the direction of my inequality. So now my domain will be from negative infinity to zero, right? And that is the opposite, or really the reflection of what we had in, if I show you back up, example three, right? Zero, well, negative zero is zero, but negative infinity goes to negative infinity. And why I'm putting negatives in front of both of these is because your domain deals with x values, and for this transformation, we're putting negatives in front of those x values. So it did flip-flop, but wherever your argument zeroes out, which is still zero, that is going to become my vertical asymptote. So let me go get that graph in, and then we will pick out some key points. Okay, so I have base two, so I wanna be attentive to that. Again, try and be efficient. And I wanna look at the points that we've been picking previously and show you why they don't work here and then how we can alter it for this example. So I had been picking one, two, four, and eight. But I want you to take note that these numbers are not in my domain. My domain is from negative infinity to zero. It only includes negative numbers. And let's just see what would happen if I plugged one in I would have log of negative one, and I'm not allowed to take the log of a negative number. But if I plug two in, I'd ultimately have log base two of negative two, and I can't do that. So the workaround here is, again, if anything that was a positive x, make it a negative x, reflect it over that y-axis. So now let's try plugging a negative one. Well, a negative of negative one is positive one, and log base two of one is zero. All right. If I plug in negative two, the negative to negative two is positive two, and log base two of two is one. And we can keep on going. If I'm plugging in negative four, well, negative of negative four is positive four. Log base two of four is two. And I think you can see when I plug in negative eight, I get a negative of negative eight, and log base two of eight is three. So I get my ordered pairs. Let me go graph these, negative one, zero, negative two, one, negative four, two, and then negative eight, three, one, two, three, there we go. And I can go ahead and graph this function. Like that. And from here I can see my range, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we're gonna stay consistent and just go for the other traits, if 
I want to look at x-intercepts, y-intercepts, end behavior, and holes. All right, so for my x-intercept, I found it. It was here at negative 1, 0. For my y-intercept, again, I still I can't plug in x equaling 0. x equaling 0 is a vertical asymptote, so I don't have a y-intercept. Your end behavior is slightly different. I want you to take note that in your domain, you have a left end. It's the right end you don't have, right? I have a graph on the left half of my x-axis. I have nothing over here. So really, I have left end up, and then I have none on the right. All right, and again, looking at my argument in terms of holes, I've got no fractions here, so I've got no holes, okay? All right, so with that, we're gonna do one more major transformation. We're gonna combo a bunch of transformations into one problem, and we're gonna actually take a look at how um, we could graph this on our calculator. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.